بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله We come to the last rukum from the arkan of al-Islam and it is the pillar of al-Hajj and al-Hajj is similar to the third and the fourth pillars in that everyone doesn't have to do it Hajj is for the person who has the ability to travel, a woman has to have a wali, has to have a mahram who is with her, someone who can travel with her and protect her. If she doesn't have a mahram, she doesn't have, what hajj is not obligatory upon her. So the hajj being the fifth pillar of al-Islam, if a person performs the hajj, it is as if he has come full circle and he has practiced all of the arkan of al-Islam. And therefore, when a person has been afforded the opportunity of performing Hajj, it's a big thing. He should take it very seriously. He shouldn't look at it as just an excursion and he's just going on a trip. He should be saying like the Muslim said 50, 60 years ago. I didn't say a thousand years ago from the Salaf. I'm talking about 50, 60, 100 years ago. If a Muslim had an opportunity to go to Hajj, it was a big thing. He gathered his family members and his relatives. He gathered the people and his, his, his neighbors and they tell him, I'm about to go to Hajj. And the community made it a big thing. Now the Hajj is just, okay, you made Hajj, no problem. No, the Hajj is serious. So in preparing to embark upon the journey, you have to be ready mentally, spiritually, physically, knowledge-wise, you have to be ready. So this fourth pillar of Al-Islam, it is a jihad in that you have to struggle because it requires a lot of effort where a person goes and he performs the Hajj and the trip to Mecca for Allah's sake. Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجِّ الْبَيْتِ مَنَ اسْتَطَعِ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا Allah has a right over all mankind that they come to his house and perform Hajj at his house if they have the ability to do so. So it is incumbent and it is in wajib upon everybody who has the ability to make it his concern to get to Mecca and to perform the Hajj. And the Hajj is only in Mecca. It's only in Mecca. If a person never went to Medina, he still performed the Hajj because there's nothing concerned them, concerning the monastic of a Hajj that are in Medina. We go to Medina because it's the second most important masjid. We go to Medina to see what happened there historically. But as it relates to the monastic of Al-Hajj, it's all in, in Mecca. So I want to take it back to the beginning of these arkan when I said in the introduction and I said in the shahadatain, La ilaha illallah, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, means I'm worshiping only Allah. I'm going to go to Mecca and I'm going to perform these actions only for Allah. I don't even have to go to Medina to visit Prophet Muhammad's Masjid and my Hajj is going to be complete because in Mecca, that's where all of the Ahkam and the Manasik of Al-Hajj are. And everything about Hajj is about worshiping Allah and following Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that the person says, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik La Sharika Lak Labbaik, Inna Alhamda Wa Ni'mata Lak Wa Al-Murk, La Sharika Lak. All of that the pilgrim keeps saying, and in it is just glorifying Allah and establishing the oneness of Allah on our tongue. We take the pebbles and we throw them at the Jamarad, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Bismillah, and we throw them at the Jamarad, we throw them has nothing to do with the Prophet as such, other than he showed us how to do it. So the Hajj of Prophet Muhammad was serious. There was a lecture that he gave, and it's called the Farewell Pilgrimage, in which he says some words, because after that Hajj, he died وسلم, not too long after the Hajj was done. And he knew that after completing the last Hajj that he did, he knew that his death was imminent. Just as he knew after fasting the Ramadan that year, he went over the Quran two times with Jibril every night. His daughter I, Fatima said, why did you do that, Ya Rasulullah? Why did Jibril come? He said, I think my death is close. I'm going to die soon. And that was in the ninth month of that year, which is the Ramadan. And then the 10th month, 
the 11th month, 12th month, he went to make Hajj three months later, and then he told the people, he made that Hajj, and he also gave them that farewell speech because he knew, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that his time had come. And he gathered all of the people up at Hajj. And when they finished the Hajj, he said, be quiet, quiet the people. When they were quiet, he said, what are you people going to say to Allah Yawm Al-Qiyamah about me? Did I relay the message? Did I make it clear to you? All of the companions said, of course, you made it clear. We're going to bear witness in front of Allah. We are saying that you made it clear and you relayed the message. Prophet Muhammad said, oh Allah, bear witness to what they said. Oh Allah, bear witness on what they said. Oh Allah, bear witness on what they said. And what they said was, you relayed the message. You relayed the importance of the shahad detained along with its meaning. You relayed the importance of the salat, the zakat, the psalm, and the hajj along with its meaning and along with its benefit. And you have not died and left this dunya except that you have left your community on clear knowledge, as he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inni tarikum fikum amrain. Lan tadillu ma in tamasaktum bihima. Kitab Allah wa sunnati. You people should know I left you with two things. You will never go astray as long as you hold on to them. The book of Allah and my sunnah. The book of Allah is the guidance from Allah and my sunnah is the practical application and how to do of that guidance. And lastly, he says, Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, la yazigu anha illa halik. He said, I have left you people. Inni taratukum ala muhajjit al-bayda layluha kannahari. I have left you people on a religion that is clear and manifest. Its nighttime is like its day. Those people who live 1,440 years after me, people living today, their Islam is just as clear as Islam of the first people who I came to. He said, no one will go astray from this clear religion that I left, except that he will be destroyed. So brothers and sisters, salvation is in writing the Safina, the Ark, of the Sunnah and what the Prophet brought Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Learn about the basics of this religion, the five arkan and what's connected to them. Get deep knowledge. The more knowledge you get about each one of them is better for you. As for that knowledge that's not beneficial, he said, she said, just leave that. 5G, Illuminati, all that stuff like that. There are conspiracies and I know that, but real knowledge is the five arkan of al-Islam. May Allah make it easy for you and me and our families to follow this religion. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause our parents and our brothers and sisters and aunties to embrace this religion. May Allah guide our sisters and our brothers to the religion of al-Islam and to the sirat al-mustaqim. And may he subhanahu wa ta'ala not allow any of our parents who are still living, siblings who are still living, relatives who are still living and they're not Muslims, may not allow any of them to taste the punishment of the hellfire, but may guide them to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, to the kalim of the tawheed, and to the meaning of the shahadatain. La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.